Hello, everybody. I am here again, once again, live this week, going through some STEM challenge pandemic makeovers, perfect for Valentine's Day. So today we're going to be talking about floating flowers, lights a little bit bright, so it's kind of hard to register these colors for some reason. That's good for me to know for the future. Um, let me just go right into it. I think we're going to be pretty quick today, and there are freebies. So I will make sure that you know how to get uh, some of these resources for free. So make sure that you watch the whole thing because I'm going to share three different links with you uh, today that are going to be super helpful. Um, just a reminder, this is one of a series of five. We've already done Heavy Hearts and Cupid's Quiver. Today, we're going to focus in on Floating Flowers. Now, Floating Flowers is actually part of, it's one of uh, a smaller section of one of those other resources. So I have a resource that's called Flower Frenzy. And there are four little mini flower challenges within it. I'm focusing in today on floating flowers because I think it's the one that works best for social distancing and distance learning. The others are totally doable, uh, but I think this is the one I would choose in this year to give us all a little bit of uh, flexibility, um, a little bit of breath of fresh air. One thing I will say, as I always say, don't show your kids pictures before they start. That's really important on this one because if you do show them pictures, you're going to get a couple of problems here. One is if they don't have colorful tissue paper, they might get bummed out, right? And it might keep them from actually building and doing the challenge, which we don't want to have happen. Also, when they see it, they tend to create the same thing. And so when I was showing you earlier, this 2D version, some kids will go straight into there. That helps a little bit if I block the light. Um, it's just a, a little couple of pieces, of little paper, you know, and a pipe cleaner. Now, I don't expect kids at home doing distance learning to have construction paper or pipe cleaners. And this is actually attached with the Brad. I don't I wouldn't expect any of that. But I want to make sure that I don't accidentally impose my idea of a design on my students. And so that's why another important reason not to stunt their creativity, not to like sort of hobble them before they even start. Um, let me show you the materials in a normal year and then tell you what I would substitute this year. So these are the kinds of things that I would usually put out. And as I just mentioned, this is one of four flower challenges. You wouldn't need all of this even in a normal year for uh, the floating flowers design. We, the reason we have that container there is to hold the water to test to the floating flowers. I like to have some things that I know are gonna be waterproof or water resistant, like maybe some pieces of plastic uh, or some foil, uh, even that coated paper plate there at the bottom. If you use it on the coated side, it's somewhat water resistant. Um, but no, we don't expect our kids to have most of these things, and that's totally fine. And this year, a couple of the things that I would do is I would just basically tell them, you know, if you have scratch paper, great. Um, look for your junk mail, cardboard scraps, food packaging, right? They, they might have plastic bags, depending on where you live, if they've been banned or not. But they probably do have some things that are somewhat water resistant that are just clean trash that'll work beautifully for this challenge. And they don't need to have a special container to test their floating flower. They can just use the sink, just stop up the sink or stop up the bathtub. Um, this is where, this is the first freebie. So the floating flower piece of the flower frenzy challenge is actually a freebie in my TPT store. And so if you type in bit.ly floating flower stem, all lowercase, it'll take you straight there and you can download the printable version of this challenge. I'm also going to tell you how to get all of flower frenzy in the paperless version for free too before the end of this video. So for the paper print version of Floating Flower STEM, you can go right here. I'll come back at the very end. I'll show all the links again uh, in case you miss anything. So I would keep the criteria and constraints pretty simple here and just say we're create. you need to create a flower that floats on water for at least 30 seconds. Now, you've seen some examples already. So this might seem way too simple. But if you don't show them examples, it's going to be more interesting to see what they do. Um, so it you can change that time frame too, but I think 30 seconds is good to a minute. Uh, flower petals must remain dry. And if you are having any science connections that you want to make for parts of a plant, photosynthesis, require them to have, you know, those parts of the plant present. So if you know you want to do the entire thing, you say like, okay, you're going to add in criteria that say, we must be able to see uh, flower petals, I want to be able to see seeds. I want to see a leaf. I want to see a stem. I want to see roots, whatever it is that, that 
may be part of your um, upcoming teaching or review, require them to have that plant part present in their designs. Um, and then I usually, when I'm in class, I usually constrain the size because I don't want to have a bunch to store that are taking up too much room. So with floating flowers, they don't need to be super big, but sometimes I'll just say it has to fit within a shoe box. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to the other flower challenges in case you decide you want to do them. And also because I mentioned I was going to share with you how to get this for free in just a minute. Um, so let me just show you, I'll, I'll kind of talk you through them, but I'm not going to go over them like too much in depth. So we have one that's called fixed flower design. Uh, and this one uh, is basically looking for a way to have your flower visible at all times, but also to be able to sort of pull it back or retract it. it and retract isn't in the criterion constraints for this one, uh, but so that you could put something on top of it is the basic uh, criterion constraints, put something on top of it and it wouldn't crush the flower. So you basically have to build this sort of frame around it and make a way for it to come out and, and be put back in. I'm going to show you how to get this whole resource for free. So you'll get all of the sort of nitty gritty about the criterion constraints when you go to pull that up. I also had one that's called functional flower uh, and they have to create something that um, is flower shaped that would have that could actually perform a task. I don't let them do pens and pencils and I don't let them do something where the flower is just added on as a decoration. But and it it doesn't have to be um, like a true prototype. It doesn't have to actually work. So, for example, this one, I've called it a pizza cutter. I've called it a soil aerator. I've called it like something you can break up gravel and weeds and stuff. Now, obviously, foil and cardboard isn't going to do that. Um, but in my imagination, this is metal. Uh, and would it be a great pizza cutter? No, probably not because of these ridges, but that's okay because I don't expect all my students' designs to be perfect in the first round. Uh, I don't expect them to be perfect ever, if I'm being honest. And so it just creates a great discussion point about what this could be used for. So in this case, maybe the student thought it was a pizza cutter, but then realized, you know what, it's probably not going to cut very well, but might be able to come up with another use for it. And then you can get into all those fun, like, you know, science failures, things like um, the microwave, um, post-it notes. There are a lot of things that were invented really because they were mistakes for, for something else somebody was trying to do and then realized there was another use. And then the other one in that in that series, because there are four small challenges, uh, I call it fluff and flatten flower. Uh, so it's like they have to create something that um, when it's all fluffed up is at least three inches across, but it can also flatten for storage to no more than an inch thick and it has to like hold its shape. So uh, and you can see in this one, we have a leaf and a stem. So those were requirements for this challenge. So there's just some examples, but now I want to show you how to get it for free because I know you want it for free. And this is the paperless version. Oh, shoot. Okay. The link is coming. I promise. It's on a different page. Before we jump into it, I want to tell you how you can increase difficulty um, with this challenge if you want to make it a little bit tougher. So you can increase the time that the um, flower has to be in the water. I'm going back to floating flowers now. Increase the amount of time the flower has to be in water uh, without getting the petals wet. You can add a flower height criterion. So the taller the flower is, the more issues you run into with balance, right? And then that also gives you an opportunity to talk about things like waves, because if the water isn't perfectly still or you have a, an imbalance of forces, that gravity is going to pull that flower right down, right? So adding a height criterion makes it much tougher for your older kids, but it also gives you an opportunity to tie in maybe some other science standards that uh, might not be as you know, present, I would say, in an easier version of this challenge. You could also, since you're going to get all four challenges, you can require the students to do all four challenges. You can ask them to create a single flower that meets the criteria and constraints of all four. That's really tough. I wouldn't do that with young kids. I would, that to me is like a middle school, seventh, eighth grade kind of thing, or like really um, adventurous, maybe really adventurous fifth and sixth graders. Um, and I would say who have a lot of uh, experience with STEM challenges because they are going to need to be really like resilient. Uh, there's going to be a lot of frustration there. Okay, this is the second freebie. So this, all lowercase again, flower frenzy freebie, flower frenzy freebie. So if you go there, you're going to be taken to a blog post of mine that's about grit. Um, and if you scroll down on the page, you'll see a little picture that says like, hey, pick up this uh, paperless design or paperless challenge for free. So this is the version that has like all the Google slides um, feedback, not feedback, 
recording and reflection sheets. Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. My brain keeps shorting out on some of the things. But if you go here um, and you sign up for my email list, you'll get this sent to you, a link sent to you in the email. If you don't want to stay subscribed, you can unsubscribe if you want. I recommend you hang around because I tend to do special freebies that are just for the people on uh, the email list from time to time. So I recommend staying on it. Uh, but you don't have to. You can unsubscribe at any time. That's how you get that one for free. Um, and then for extensions, I have one more um, link there to offer you. I'll tell you what that's about in a second. But obviously, this is flower. So anything, anything connected to any of your plant standards, life science standards that you have going on, plant parts, photosynthesis, seed dispersal, pollination, how plants impact weathering and erosion. Uh, you can have them create their own flower challenges. That can be a lot of fun. And then you can actually do some of them. There are a lot of different ways to connect this. You can talk about symmetry and nature. Um, you get the idea. There's just, there are a lot of possible life science connections here. And then I left one more link down here. This is my other YouTube channel. Uh, my other YouTube channel, channel is Simple Stem From Home. Uh, and I had made at the beginning of the pandemic two week long series of STEM challenges that are, and the videos are actually um, like student directed. So I'm talking to the kids. Uh, and I did one series of, I think it's four days of a boat challenge. And the other one is for towers. But the boat challenge has some other little freebies there tied in. And when you go to this YouTube link, you'll see the whole playlist. When you go into a playlist, in the description, there are links for additional sort of like uh, extension activities there. There's like a choice board and floating flowers isn't exactly a boat, but a lot of the things that would connect for extensions for a boat STEM challenge connect here as well. So it's another place to explore. Uh, you can assign out those videos to your students if you want, or you can go in, watch them yourself, or just go through and like sort of mine the Google Slides resources. Some of them are Google Slides and some are Google Forms. Um, and so it's just another place to get some extra resources. Um, I think that is actually might be it for today. Um, so you have this option to pick up those freebies. I want to show you one more time. I know I keep showing you this and then I'll pull up all the links for the freebies again in case you missed any of them, joined a little bit late or whatever. Um, I do want to remind you that you can enter for a chance to win a seat to elementary STEM con and beyond. I am so excited about this conference. It comes with $50, over $50 of STEM resources to me. If you are a self-contained teacher, if you have even a passing interest in STEM or you're a STEM elective teacher, elementary or middle, even high school, we have some content for that. To me, it's insane not to come to this conference. Uh, but you can try to enter to get a chance to win for you and a friend on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You just look for this bright pink post this week. Um, and every week after, it'll be a different post, but you'll have a different contest starting every single Sunday for another chance to win a seat because we think everybody should be at this conference. That's how we feel about it. All right, just before we head out, these are all of the freebie links again. The first one, Floating Flower STEM. That is the printable version of the student handouts. And there's also teacher tips and hints and some other ideas for extensions um, in that as well. Uh, the second freebie, flower frenzy freebie. It's going to take you to one of my blog posts, but when you go there, there's an option to sign up for, to get this for free and join the email list. If you don't want to stay on the email list, nobody's forcing you. I do recommend you stay because I, I do special things just for people who, who do stay on the list. And then the last one, simple STEM boat takes you to the playlist and those are student directed videos. But when you look into the descriptions, you'll also find some Google slides, some Google forms, some extra extensions that um, you can use with floating flower stem, or you might just want to, you know, pick that up and use it later another time when you maybe like have a sub or a day you were just not feeling like teaching and you want just some, somebody to just here, students, watch watch this video for this other, this other teacher is going to talk to you for a little while. So it could come in handy later. There's also, like I said, a playlist for towers. I think the towers one is for five days of student videos and the boats one is four days of student videos. So it's just another option. I know we need as much in our toolbox as we can get. That is it for today. But tomorrow I will be back. And what is tomorrow? Tomorrow we're doing, tomorrow we're doing card towers. Uh, but I call it cards in the clouds or Towers of Love. 
And it's just, it's got a Valentine's Day twist on it, which is really nice. And if you have older students, like in the middle school, I know they don't exchange Valentine's Day cards and maybe nobody is this year. I don't know what the deal is. So I'll give you all those pandemic modifications, but also modifications for older students and ways we can die, tie in classroom community and kindness, whether they're doing card exchanges or not. So same time, same place tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. I'll see you then. Bye for now.